Hey, what's up? This is Christopher, and I'm back with another Final Cut Pro 10 Basics for Beginners. In this video, I'm talking about transitions. I'm going to show you how to add transitions to your clips, how to adjust them. Some transitions have different parameters that you can change, such as like a vertical or horizontal transition, where you can adjust these. Uh, you could add like the amount of the type of effect in the transition, or you could adjust the type of effect to it, or like the number of particles or something that may be in a particular transition. So I'm going to show you how to do that. now. I just want to mention before I get started, this is meant to be for absolute beginners to Final Cut Pro 10. There's going to be nothing advanced here. Uh, that's hence the title, Basics for Beginners. So this is some very basic stuff. Now I did go over transitions. I think it was in the second video that I put in the series, uh, Basics of Editing. So this is going to focus on just transitions and I'll go into a little more depth about the transitions, uh, talk about some of the third party transitions as well as the built-in ones that come with Final Cut Pro 10. So what I have here on my timeline is I have some footage from a balloon festival. So we're going to come over here and right above the timeline you have this looks like two little triangles touching noses or whatever uh, show or hide transition browser. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and then all your transitions will open up. Now I just wanted to mention I do have third-party plugins installed so my transition browser it's probably going to look a little bit different than yours unless you have the exact same transitions that I have which I highly doubt anybody would have the exact ones that I have installed so just wanted to mention that but it looks a little funny that's because I have third-party plugins so I'm gonna use the default ones first that come with Final Cut and probably the most popular most overused one is the cross dissolve now I have two clips here you'll notice here the bounding box is around this particular clip and I'll click on this one and now it puts the bounding box around that clip and I'm just going to click on this cross dissolve hold when I click and then just drag it between these two clips so now I have the dissolve right here and when I play push space bar on my keyboard and it transition from the balloon clip to these people uh, walking around the balloon festival now I can click on the transition and you'll notice the bounding yellow box so I can adjust this transition now so if I want to adjust the length of it I'm gonna move my cursor right here to the beginning of it and you'll notice that it goes from the selection arrow to the trim tool and I'm just gonna click and hold and then just drag and you'll notice that the time there is changing it's like four seconds I can bring it all the way back down to one I could make it super short like 15 tenths of a second but uh, I'm going to do it like two seconds now. See if I can get it right on to. Oh, that's close enough. 2.6 seconds. So we do it. It's a little bit slower transition. And you can adjust this now. I can click on this again. And I'm going to come up here to my parameters menu. And you'll notice the cross dissolve here. I can change the look. I can go from video. I can do shadows, highlights, subtractive, additive, dull, sharp, film, bright, dark, warm. Uh, I can do the ease amount. I can do ease in or just ease out or I could do both which is what it's set to now this particular clip does not have any audio but if you did you could also cross fade the audio in or out and you know if you have a clip with audio in there it'll kind of like transition from one clip to the next and that audio will fade and then the other audio from the next clip will fade in so you have a nice smooth transition from one shot to the next but you can go ahead and adjust this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do ease in. And then I'm going to adjust the ease amount. I'm just going to put it like 2.8. So let's watch this and see how the ease in comes. How much slower that is. You'll notice that it went right there. Right to the next. The little kid brushing his hair. And let's go ahead and delete this. So I'm going to show you all the transitions have different parameters. So I'm going to do this band right here. And this does like a horizontal band. So let me play this from one clip and then you see it had those little band bars so we can come up here and we can do the direction we'll change that to vertical and then we're going to adjust the band account let's just bump it up to about 20 or so and let's put the playhead back here and then we'll start playing this clip you got the hot air balloons and then you have that transition from one clip to the next with the bands and then let's find another transition i'm gonna come over here to the lights let's go with how about this lens flare transition or let's see static let's look at the static but that has a bunch of uh, parameters we can adjust oh, actually it doesn't it just has style A or style B so let's see what the difference between these are we'll start with style A okay pretty cool pretty cool now let's change it to style B and let's see what style B looks like if we can notice any difference in it 
Okay, yeah, definitely notice some uh, difference. Looks like a uh, TV like uh, lost the uh, cable connection or something. Uh, let's look at the dissolves, blurs. Pretty sure all these are stock. Oh, how about the zoom and pan? That's a pretty cool one. So we'll delete this transition, click on it, and then tap delete on the keyboard. So let's drag this here. Let's see what the default zoom and pan looks like. Cool, cool. I like that a lot. Let's see what parameters we have up here. So we could do the amount, we could do the start point and the end point on that. So let's just, how about if we lower the amount, let's bring that down to, let's just say about 20. And let's see what that looks like. Let me get to play it up a little bit. Okay, so it wasn't quite as much zoom to it. Now let's bump it up. How about we bump it up to, let's say 58 just for the heck of it. Wow, a lot of zoom there or whatever. All right, so what if we adjust the start point? Let's move this up on the Y and we'll just uh, probably leave that. Oop. Let's just see what this looks like. Okay, cool. I can see a little bit of a difference there. It's kind of hard to tell, like, because it's so short. But you know what we could do? We can lengthen that. Let's make it like two seconds and see if we notice some difference here with the transition. Oh yeah, definitely slower. That didn't seem like two seconds, but yeah, it was. So let's uh, let's bump up the amount. Let's go 80, and then we're gonna bump up the start point of it. This is now. This is where the transition is going to come in at. And then we can adjust the end point as well. So let's just drag that. And it's going to end a little bit uh, more to the side. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see what that did now. Yeah, so that's kind of weird looking. Uh, that's something you'd have to just play with. And you may like something that, you know, looks different than whatever I would choose. Uh, it's all subjective. Let's go with objects here. And... How about the arrows? Let's check out the arrows here. And let's see what kind of parameters they got. In cap, you do arrow, round, square, none, bevel, and then you have motion blur. So let's put the motion, well, actually let's leave it off and then we will play it um, with it on. So here it goes. Okay, cool, cool. Looks like a little circular arrow. Now let's put some motion blur on here. Oops, I didn't mean to put the playhead back so far. I accidentally clicked. Ah, nice. Yeah, I like that blur. Kind of bugged out there in the browser window. Let me click this again. How about instead of arrows, let's go with, let's put some, add some bevel to it. Couldn't really see the difference there. Not to the naked eye. So let's just make that a little bit slower or longer, excuse me. Okay, that's kind of cool. You know, this is, for whatever your project that you are working on, this is something you're just going to have to play with to find what type of transition you like. How about the color panels here? I bet this has a lot of options to choose. Maybe not, but we'll find out in a second. Oh, yeah. So you have a ton of um, color panel options up here. You can choose the different colors of the panel, uh, saturation, shift, and then hue shift. So let's play that to see what it looks like. Yeah, I kind of like that one. That one looks really good right there, in my opinion. And, but wipe. So let me go ahead and delete this. And then let's go with, and if you scrub your cursor over the transition, you can kind of get an idea of what it will look like. It kind of, it's gonna show you the effect here in the browser window. But let me show you some of the third-party plugins. Now, this is one of my favorite plugins. It's from Motion VFX. Uh, I know you heard me talk about them in a previous video. I buy a ton of their plugins because, in my opinion, they're some of the best Final Cut Pro 10 plugins that you can get for the money. But it's called M Transition Zoom. So you have some custom ones, zoom in and zoom out. But he has a ton of pre-animated ones in here. And let me just find some cool ones. We'll see. We're gonna rotate it. So I'm just gonna show you real quick. What I'll do is, uh, we will just play this here. Boom, and you see how that had that little motion blur effect. And of course, you can adjust the blur angle, and then it has some um, audio crossfades as well. So let's try another one here. How about the detach horizontal? 
let's make this a little bit longer just go maybe like so cool and you notice that it split apart and then of course you can adjust the blur amount now with the custom with the custom we'll do the zoom in right here this is really cool with the custom so you have a little bit more options up here in the parameters you could adjust like the center point the xy and then the blur amount and then of course you can uh, adjust it on the xy axis as far as where the center is so let me just show you let me make this a little bit longer so we'll just bump this up to like two seconds so we get an idea of what we're working with here okay so that was the transition right there now let's move the center point we'll move it over and down come up here and now let's look at the transition yeah you see how that went from like one point started at the lower left and then transitioned to the upper I mean it started at the lower right and then transitioned to the upper left and then you could add some more blur to it so let's bump that blur way up now watch it yeah a lot of blur there and then we'll bring it way down whoops So yeah, so it removed a lot of that blur in the transition. So as I said, this is a third-party plugin. I believe it is $59, and I'll put a link in the description where you can find this particular one. I also have a video showing uh, a demo of M Transition Zoom on my YouTube channel. I'll link that as well. So if you have any questions or comments about transitions, feel free to leave that below. Be sure to check out the other videos in my Basics for Beginners. If you're interested in Final Cut Pro 10 or learning about getting started with Final Cut Pro 10, uh, I've been uploading pretty much every other day or every couple days um, all Final Cut Pro 10 related content. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. I hope everyone has a super duper fantastic day.